Okay. Um, I had some folks at the last minute tell me they can't be here tonight. So we will muddle through. Um, I think what we'll do is we will just skip over the minutes for the for the moment because I've asked Sarah Carrie. Oh, here comes hold on one second. Tara Key. Oh, this is what I wanted to. Uh, let's see, Tara's connecting. I don't know if it's Tara or Tara. I'm gonna have to ask her. Um, Tara or Tara, are you there? You're muted. There she is. You're muted though. Hi. You Hi, sorry about Hi. that. Hi. How you doing? I'm good, how are you? Good, so are you Tara or Tara? I'm Tara. You are Tara. Good. Yes. Glad I asked. No problem. Um, so welcome, Tara. Thank you, Thank you so Tara much. Tara is our new um, TDAC member from the library. So we're thrilled to have a presence from the library. And um, maybe I think what we should do is just quickly go around the room and everybody just quickly introduce yourselves to Tara. She might know some of you, but um, just do that. So actually in my squares, I'm looking at Nancy. Why don't you start? I'm Nancy Geary. I'm the executive director of the New Canaan Museum and Historical Society. Hi, Nancy. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Whoever wants to go next, just go along here. Hi, I'm BJ Flagg. I'm uh, from Newer New Brand Marketing and Loop Inc., the print source company in town. Hi, BJ. Nice to meet you. Good to meet you. Hi, I'm Alan Magrino. I'm the president of Magrino PR. Hi, Alan. Nice to meet you. I'm Greg Sages, executive director for the next week at the Glass House. After that, I have my successor joins. Ah, <laughs> nice to meet you. Joins friend. the Glass House. <laughs> right. I'll be around. We're not going right. to go far, Greg. I'm Meg Walsh from Grace Farms Foundation. Hi, Meg. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. And Dan. Hi, how are you? Uh, Dan Mulhern, uh, work for Raymore and Flanagan, former resident and business owner from uh, New Canaan, and welcome aboard. Thank you so much. Nice to meet you, Greg. Nice. And Laura, Laura Bud was on, I don't know if she's having connectivity issues. She was on, she'll be coming back. Um, Laura Bud, who is the executive director of the Chamber of Commerce. And then you know me, Tucker Murphy with the town of New Canaan. Yes, and I have met Laura before um, in person and by email as well. Good, and here she is, she's joining again. So um, we're just gonna skip over the minutes. I asked Sarah Carey to join us. Um, some of you may know Sarah. She works for the town as well. She's our town planner and she's doing a great job. Sarah, how long have you been on this now? Is it a year yet? Um, so I've worked for the town since January of 22. So it's been over a year and a half, but okay. I've been town planner for two months. Right, Yeah. right. So there you have it. But um, all right, so Sarah is here to talk to us about the plan of conservation and development and just to give us an overview of that process and why we do it, why it's so important. And, and the key to this, I mean, this is a lot of what the POCD as we call it, is going to um, uh, study are many of the things that we are grappling with ourselves and that kind of thing. So Sarah, if you wanna just tell everybody a little bit about the process and what to expect and that kind of thing, it'd be great. Yeah, so um, thank you all for um, giving me the moment to speak with you tonight. Um, you know, planning, planning and zoning is about to embark on this very long but exciting process to update our plan of conservation and development. And a key part of that is engaging with the public and community stakeholders, you know, businesses, institutional uses, um, and just the greater community in general. Um, and so, you know, it's going to be a we're hoping a very active public engagement process, which is why I'm here tonight. Um, we have the Planning and Zoning Commission's um, POCD subcommittee, who is kind of spearheading this, but I'm the staff person and main point of contact for all of this. And then we have a consultant, um, SLR International, who is also helping us to, you know, really do the heavy lifting on um, getting this plan started. Um, but just for some background of what is a plan of conservation and development, it's a state mandated plan that um, must be updated every 10 years. Um, ours was last updated in 2014, and it's about a year long process to go through this, which is why we're starting now in 2023. Um, and it's essentially an official municipal statement that sets a vision, goals, and action steps for the town over the next 10 years. Um, 
you know, focused on development, conservation of the environment, historical resources, and, you know, um, just other items that are important to the town. And so, um, as I said, it's state mandated. And so there are these 12 broad categories that we must address in the plan. Um, it gets a bit technical, so I won't run through all of them for you, but, um, you know, there are key themes um, with development and conservation that I think are relevant to this group. You know, in 2014, one of our main chapters was about nurturing downtown um, and preserving community character. That was another big um, chapter. And so, you know, those are all relevant today still. And so the, the best way to think about the plan is we're going to kind of take a um, so we're, we're starting with a survey, but we're basically trying to evaluate what's important to the town. And then from that, you know, we take these broad goals and values and then we create a broad actionable plan. So A is important to the town. So we want to, over the next five years, do steps B, C and D to get us to achieve goal A. So it's, it's very broad, but um, you get a little specific um, as you come up with those action items. And so more specifically, I'm here tonight about the community engagement plan. Um, we're starting things off on Monday, so it's very exciting. Um, we're starting with a community survey. And so that's gonna run from September 11th to September 30th. And it, it takes about 25, 20 minutes to complete. And we're essentially trying to get um, at least 4,000 people to submit responses to the survey. And it's, um, it's basically a way for us to understand how the community feels about New Canaan as it is in its current state and where we should be heading. And so it asks questions, you know, do you feel that downtown has too many restaurants or too many office spaces? Um, what is it lacking? And then it also, you know, goes more into historic preservation of do we need to expand our, his, um, our historic district or are we doing enough to, um, you know, protect our historical resources? So it's very broad. Um, and again, that launches on the 30th. Um, we're going to try to post flyers all around town. Um, I was going to reach out to a lot of you to ask that you post flyers, um, you know, on your site. So I was going to reach out to the library, Grace Farms, Glass House, um, to see if there were appropriate places to um, post those. And I was also going to reach out to a lot of businesses to see if we could post flyers in their windows. Um, we're also going to be doing a press release, and um, the link will be hosted on our on our website. It's just not ready quite yet, so I can't share it with you tonight, but I'll make sure to get that um, to you all through Tucker, through whatever channel. And so that's my spiel. Um, happy that's to answer great. any questions. So I think the only thing that you said, um, you said it launches on the 11th and goes through the so Monday. Yes. Yeah, so um, it's gonna be a two week period to get these minimum of 4,000 responses. So it is really important. Um, if we can get the help of you all and some of your organizations and your connections to promote this. Um, this, I've always said, in my opinion, that the POCD is probably one of the most important documents that we in, as a town undertake. And as I say, it as, as Sarah said, it happens every 10 years. Um, so Sarah and I met, there is a press release that's going out. Uh, we've also got a list of a lot of different, including all of your organizations and that kind of thing. So, um, Please help us promote it, and please, when you receive it, uh, complete it and participate in the survey. And then, um, anybody got any questions for anybody participate in this in the past or have any questions um, specifically for Sarah on this? I have, I have a question. Thank you so much for the overview. I love thinking about doing this for our, our families and towns. Um, my question is: Having done surveys in the corporate context, is there are we mm -hmm. offering any like? prizes or awards like you know gift certificate to elm or you know greenology or something if you complete it or is it completely anonymous or how can we really inspire people to fill it out sure so um we did like not sometimes in, in the corporate world if i were trying to get thousands of people to fill something out i would say like you know this, we'll pull over anyone who enters gets a chance to win an apple gift card or something like that <laughs> yeah so um we had not um thought of that but that is a great idea um it is anonymous, so I mean, you have to put in an email address um, just to have a, because it's hosted through SurveyMonkey. Monkey, I'm sure a lot of you have done surveys through there. Um, so you have to have an email address, but it is completely anonymous. Um, you know, this was just supposed to hopefully drum up some support, but um, it, while it is a hard deadline of September 30th, if we only have 2,000 and we're really going for 
4,000, um, we will keep it open for longer and um, something like a contest to win a gift card or something is a great idea. And we would probably try to incentivize pe people through that if we don't get the response we're looking for in the first couple of weeks. And Meg, the other thing that Sarah and I talked about when we did this, um, however, 10 years ago, I guess, um, we had a photo contest component of it because we really wanted to accumulate a lot of great photos for the presentation. And we did offer, I think we had like $150 um, chamber gift certificate to, you know, to a local business. And um, so I, I'm always after more photo content. You know, I think we can never have enough of that. So we talked about doing that down the road right now. We wanted to get everybody really focused on the community survey, but we thought that um, the photo contest might be a nice addition, you know, once we've gotten the survey results as part of the POCD to drum up some excitement, but also to just, you know, create this library of, of photos. So. Great. Well, we're happy to help support um, however we can spread the word about the survey. Thank you. And Laura, we'll need you to get it to all of your businesses um, and also to promote it in one of your blasts so that everybody, everybody knows too. And I do want right. to highlight that um, it's not just for, um, you know, residents of New Canaan, it is also for those that just work in the town, um, which I think is especially important as we send it out to the local businesses. Um, it's really just about anyone who interacts in the town of New Canaan. Yeah, the other thing, Sarah, you might want to think about is, um, you know, doing a podcast maybe with the New Canaanite um, about it. Uh, just those seem to get a lot of uh, traction and it might be a great way for if he were to interview you about the process and all that goes into it. Yep, that's a great idea. Yeah, so. All right, well, Sarah, thank you. I know you've worked all day and I appreciate you coming on tonight and joining us. And I knew it wouldn't take long, but I wanted to make sure everybody here knew about, about it to expect it. And um, we're looking for anybody's help that we can get to get the, the much participation as we can. So thanks. Yep, great, thank you. Have a good night, everyone. All right. See you, Sarah, thanks. We're really enjoying working with her. She's doing a fabulous job. Um. Part of the other piece of this was um, we thought, Sarah and I thought that it would be nice if we had someone from TDAC as the liaison to the whole process. And I'm gonna ask, I've asked Susan Schweitzer to do that for us. She's uh, participated in several POCDs in her professional role, but also here in town. Basically that means that she's just gonna follow the process, report back to us, make sure we know of any key events, and that kind of thing. So uh, she hasn't said yes yet because I emailed her, but we'll see what she says. Um, just moving right along, why don't we do the minutes since I, I think we do have enough people now that everyone's here. So, um, you all got the minutes of our June 22nd meeting and I would just love it if we could get, um, a motion to approve. Alan and a second of BJ. All right. Everybody in favor? Yep. Nobody against? Okay, good. Good pass. Um, the next item is we labeled as brainstorming session and the brainstorming session idea came from a brainstorming session between Laura, Dan, myself, um, where we talked about really trying to refocus TDAC and exactly what our priorities are going to be for this uh, sort of coming. I think, of you know, the, there's obviously the year of January to December, but I still think of the year as school years for September to June. I'm still in the, <laughs> kind of that train of thought, but so Dan is going to lead us in our next um, meeting in October. Um, we're going to uh, hear a couple of things that I'm proposing. Um, we would like as much as we think the virtual meeting format works for everybody, it certainly makes it easier for people to attend. Um, we did decide that sometimes you get a better meeting by having you know, some in person as well. So what we're hoping to do is go to every other. Uh, virtual and then in-person, that kind of thing. So I'm hoping that our next meeting, and I know I've changed the dates for you guys, but it's October 19th, which happens to be a Thursday, that we would be in person in the boardroom. Now, having said that, I will always have a Zoom component. So if somebody is traveling or just can't be there or whatever, certainly the hybrid um, hybrid model will work, but we're really encouraging everyone to come and, and be there in person. And we really just want to uh, sort of, again, hunker down as a group, talk about our areas of focus, come to an agreement of exactly what we're going to bite off this year, sort of review our 2023 accomplishments. You know, what, what did we not get finished that we still need that we need to get finished? Talk about our, our sort of our mission and goals and things like that. So um, 
Dan and Laura, I don't know if you have anything, Dan specifically, you had a lot of good ideas when we spoke, but um, do you want to just address it a little bit with the group of what we were talking about and how we plan to proceed? Well, um, I just, in my period of time being on the board or the group, um, I find sometimes we get off track on coming up with new ideas on what we're trying to, what we like to accomplish. And sometimes we're not really, we kind of lose focus of what we ultimately are here for. And it's to impact the downtown, the people coming into our towns to market ourselves and making sure that we also create some energy and some excitement for um, all the businesses that are there. So they are start becoming uh, active members to help us achieve this, uh, you know, a lot of the expectations and goals that we set. And sometimes we find, and we all are guilty of it, is it comes down to the all of us working together and jumping in and helping get the job done. And so uh, I actually myself just asked Tucker, what is it that you, you want to get out of this committee and almost helping all of us kind of set a benchmark of what is our goal? How do we see accomplishing it? And then how will we each as individual members participate in it? And I don't know, and unfortunately I did not come in the very early portion. I've only been on a little over a year. Um, so for those that have gotten on to the board over the last nine to 12 months, maybe they didn't experience really what that brainstorming was on the onset. And I think it's time for us to refocus. And almost I'd love to be able to say, we accomplished this, this, and it was not a, uh, an adjunct topic that came up. It was really something that we said, we're going to do it. We're going to commit to it. Perfect example would be the business development guide. Um, you know, there's been a group that have worked diligently and very hard on trying to make this happen, but this has taken a long time and it's getting all the members and we understand trying to get all the members aligned, what it takes to, to happen, but also it takes individuals to step up and help move things along. And so I would just love to, you know, and maybe, you know, and I'll circle back with uh, Laura and Tucker is to really have Tucker maybe restate what she really believes our purpose is. And then all of us really um, kind of whiteboard, what do we think it is? And then really come down to a kind of, I'm going to call it five key areas or three key areas, because we know we can't handle a lot of, unless it meets these criteria, we probably can't take it on. And I think everyone has best of intentions to um, want to contribute, but sometimes we just keep adding more stuff that we need to accomplish versus really getting things accomplished. Um, and I'm sure you all have your own insight as to what that looks like and how you would like it to be um, clarified as to really, where do you need my help? Um, what's the number one objective? And then, let's check it off our list. Does that seem like Tucker sort of what we chatted about? Exactly. Um, I think I think this group, we were very, we were hyper-focused in the beginning because we were brand new and we had facilitators who helped us sort of get launched. And I think we have accomplished a great deal, um, but I agree with you. We, we tend to have gotten out of our lane at times and distracted. And um, so, you know, we, we at the, I don't know, mid part through last year, we had decided, you know, that we did have three areas of focus, which we're still working on, which are, we had spent a lot of time thinking about all the different cultural assets in town. And we've done a lot in the way of promotion. And thanks to so many of you on this call, we've, uh, you know, we've managed to do that with the cultural guide, October for design, all these great events. Um, but we really wanted to focus on the downtown now, uh, being that we had so many new people moving to town and, and the businesses in the downtown. We really wanted to, you know, focus on just basic marketing of the town. And we're, again, we're doing that with this video project, which I'll talk about in a minute. And then this business development guide, again, which I'll, I'll bring you up to speed on that. But so I think Dan's right. I think it's time to sort of take a look back. What have we done? Where have we gone? Where do we hope to go to? Um, and I think we are going to need everybody's input on that. So I, I will hope for an in-person meeting in the boardroom on the 19th. Again, there will be a Zoom option if someone absolutely can't make it, 
but I'd love to think that we could, um, for that meeting, definitely get there in person. And I will ask anybody who wasn't able to be here tonight, I'll have them watch this recording in advance of that next meeting so that they can be, uh, be up to speed. Laura, you have anything to add? I'm not sure, Laura's, Laura's square is looking a little funky to me. Oh, there she is. <laughs> I can, we can't hear you, Laura. You're muted. <laughs> you should see it, Laura. There's two of you. Yeah. <laughs> and she can't unmute. <laughs> if we just had two Lauras, we wouldn't need T Deck. <laughs> can you unmute her, Tucker, as a uh, host? Let me see. I can try. Uh, <laughs> it's worth uh, it. Uh, Laura Bud, where is she here? My little list. Oh, there she is. Uh, asked to unmute. I just asked you to unmute, Laura. See if that works. There <laughs> she right. goes. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Uh, so I think where we focused, where we did really well, is when we had had a goal, and then we bit off, you know, a couple projects that we could then execute. Um, and kind of know what our limitations are, but move us toward. I mean, I think the cultural guide, the business development guide, you know, are huge successes. Um, and I think going forward, I think we've got a great opportunity, you know, uh, to focus on downtown and we can really tie it into events that are going on there and really put, put some focus there. I mean, we've got some real competition coming with Darianne. Yep. So I think this is the time and I think really honing in and figuring out what's reasonable for us to accomplish work-wise and budget-wise. Um, and, you know, we've got all these new people in town. So um, with that in mind, I um, worked, I'm working with Bev and Laura of Unlocking Connecticut again. And I reached out to a bunch of businesses downtown who were chamber members and you know, really have great unique uh, products and services. And uh, eight of them have signed up, they will pay individually. And we're gonna do Day Trip New Canaan part two, which will just be some of the, the, the downtown stores and talking about downtown, but focusing on those eight individual stores. And I think that'll be a great gateway. It should come out right around the time of the holiday stroll. So I think it'll be a, a great way to kick off the holiday season for shopping. And then also BJ and I met today and talking about how we're going to approach the holiday stroll and really, really re-emphasize, you know, focusing <laughs> in you town know. Uh, to come shop here. Great. Okay. And if I, there's noise in my background, I'm sitting here, my newborn grandson is screaming and my two-year-old is screaming too. There's two adults managing them, but if they're screaming in the background... <laughs> I'm not torturing these kids. Someone else is, not no. me. <laughs> um, all right, thank you. So that's the goal. And Dan, thank you for helping us with that. And uh, I'll, yep. I'll send more out on that, but we'll look forward to that discussion on the 19th of October. A um, couple of things that we just talked about, the, the video update. So we are working, you know, we, we did get approvals. We've had our uh, videographers come to a couple of our events. We plan to bring them to um, Halloween parade, holiday stroll, that kind of thing. And at the end, produce this wonderful video of all things New Canaan. So that'll be something that will be evergreen and we can, you know, have in our in our coffers for when we need to promote New Canaan. Well, we'll throw it out there deliberately, but also we'll have it as just a sort of stock for when we need to um, get the word out. The business development guide is also nearing completion. As we said at the last meeting, we we were on hold because we weren't sure with the changes in, in the elections and things like that. We didn't want to go and get something out there that was going to change um, just because a lot of the, the names and that kind of thing have changed. So we're holding off on that. BJ, you have something to add? Yeah, and um, one of the important parts is um, Sarah didn't touch upon is that they are doing a big modernization of being able to do so many things online. So mm -hmm. we're Absolutely. really excited about that and want that to be part of the guide. So right. we figured, you know, yes, we could, you know, rush and get it done, but there's just so much in the next three months that 
is right. happening that we want to incorporate it all. Yeah, the town's um, taken on a new software company. We're going to be doing a lot of the permitting and a lot of that kind of thing online. So it was it's a game changer and absolutely integral to what we're doing with the development guide. So between that and then any changes that we were having in, in the government, we just decided, you know, we've got it ready. It's there, but we'll just insert all that information once we have it. Have it. So um, the special event schedule, I talked to you about that the last, uh, last time, but I just want to let you know, um, in, in my three years now and doing this job, all of a sudden the events are coming out of the woodwork. There are events everywhere. It seems like everybody's back. So, um, and I think all of you know this, but any of you that don't, if you have any big events, you know, do run them by me. I keep the master calendar. Laura also has a community calendar. And having said that, um, Nancy, um, are what's going on with October for Design? I'm sort of inserting that in special events, but what have you got going on this year? We have a pretty busy, um three quarters of a month. I would say the first um, the first event is the opening of the Myron Goldfinger exhibit at the, the museum, but the glass house has given me some events to post. The carriage barn has given me some events to post and Grace Farms has given me some events. So we have a pretty busy calendar between the 14th and the, I think the 29th is the last day. I just heard that Star is doing their Through the Looking Glass um, social justice youth project again and so i'm going to reach out and see if they want that included on the 28th so it's 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 pretty busy um what we gave up on is the like the trying to coordinate with the restaurants and trying to coordinate with the galleries it just didn't nobody wanted to take that lead and it didn't work yeah 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 unfortunately i mean i i, I hear you it happens often but i think you're smart to leverage what did work Keep going, and sounds like you've got a robust schedule as part of it. Yeah. Okay. Great. Greg. On the uh, TDAC video update, who's the point person? I Chris is back from vacation, and she pulled a couple of snippets from the summer party. I think you had asked about that last. Yeah. yeah. Have her uh, be in touch with me, and then I can connect her with uh, Nick Ranieri, is the, is the young man who's helping us with it. He's got a team of folks, and he helps over at Lapham quite a bit. <coughs> so, um, have her be in touch with me and I'd love to get some of that. That would be perfect. Great. Tucker, Tucker can I ask a question on Live New, is it Live New Canaan? Is that the, um, they, they manage this, the social feed on the town? Or? Yeah, they, I mean, it's, a, it's, it's not part of the town, municipal town piece, but yes, Live New Canaan is the campaign that started a couple of years ago. Uh-huh. Right. I'm just wondering if that could be re-energized. I mean, I was just thinking, you know, this whole stuff with Richard Gere in the news lately and everyone's like, oh my God, Richard Gere's in town. But, you know, he's one of several celebrities here. You know, we've got Harry Connick, we've got a few and everybody kind of just lets everyone coexist. I don't know if they would ever do kind of a little snippet like Why New Canaan that we could put out there on social. I mean, everything's about social now and we could yeah. do some paid spend to support it and get it out there and do some fun stuff. I, I don't know. And it doesn't have to be just celebrities. It could also be prominent business people that are in the town. Because I think anybody that lives here really, really, you know, loves living yeah. here and would be be happy to do it. It's just something kind of cute and fun. And the real estate agents could leverage it on their networks. And I, I, I just know my office, I have a lot of people looking to buy up here. And right now they can't get in, but they're just so intrigued by all of these towns up here. And I think anything we can do to like even push it a little bit more. That's really good, really good thought. I think what I'll do is um, I'm going to reach out to Nancy Gra 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 uh, Greenspan, whatever, no, not Greenspan, Greenspan, um, and, uh, <laughs> and see, I don't know if she's still handling it. I know Subanko was doing a lot of the posting, but I think you're right. Leveraging that with an angle like that might be really worthwhile. <laughs> Yeah, or even if they could do a takeover one day or just tag Live New Canaan, I just think it's it's kind of an, an easy way to get more eyeballs. And okay. What I might do is, um, if you'd be okay with that, maybe set up a quick Zoom call with, with us and you get on there and help explain it and see what we could do. Sure. Okay. No Great. Well, where the, do we know where the budget is on all that? I mean, you know, TDAC certainly uh, contributed to it. I know it's a board of realtors thing. I wonder if their contract has run out with Noble House. I don't know. I haven't been in touch with them in a while. So um, I need to find out if they're running with it themselves now. I'm not sure. 
Well, I think there's enough, you know, young teenagers in town that could help put something together, obviously with some senior guidance too, but. Um, Absolutely. Interesting. Okay, That's good thought. Cool. I'll follow up on that for sure. Um, one of the other things that's happening is, um, you know, Jack Taffaro has been talking about this cultural district follow-up. Laura and I had done some work on that a couple of years ago. He's still doing some more work. He had hoped that he could be here tonight, but he can't. So he will be reporting back on that. Um, and moving right along, as you know, Metro North is back. Uh, I can't believe it, but they were, they actually, I mean, we thought it was going to be well into October before they finished the work, but they're back and it, the trains are running and everything seems to be uh, copacetic for now. We had prepared for the worst and hoped for the best and, I think it went as smoothly as it could have gone. So um, that's that's good news because it really could have been pretty catastrophic if it started taking forever. I have to say they aren't any quicker though. I thought they were going to be quicker. Well, they're not now because there's all this positive control with the whole line that has to be implemented. So this was really more about placing all of it. it I think it was more infrastructure in terms of sort of safety pieces. Okay. The best part that I think happened was, I don't know how many of you ever noticed, but for years, those steel catenaries at the end of the line by that fence across from Starbucks, cool. they were rusted out and they were awful. And we always wanted to get them painted. And the Metro North said, you know, you can't do it when we have to deactivate the lines and all that. I don't know if you saw them doing it, but it was literally like three days before last weekend, they were out there painting them and they're back to their original color. So they look much better. Good. Good. Um, I, this is always a good time to go around the room quickly and just find out again what's going on with everybody. Um, Laura, I wanted you to quickly talk about the CT Main Street program presentation that you were hoping to have them come speak to us about. Yeah, Dr. So, um, I've been invited to be on a panel in October, actually, with Bev and Laura from Unlocking Connecticut, talking about promoting downtowns and all that. And they have sort of an interesting program. Um, you know, they try to get municipalities to join, but they're really here for every every town. And uh, we may have their kind of community outreach guy speak to us next October. Just talk about some of the general good practices that are going on in communities and how other communities are promoting themselves around the state. So I thought he'd be interesting to speak to. Okay, good. What else is going on? Um, Nancy, you already gave us your update on October for design. What else have you got going on over there at, at the museum? We, we have a pretty ambitious next year because we are taking out the library and putting in an 1,100 square foot exhibition on the history of Connect uh, New Canaan. So we've been working with a museum designer for about three years out of Philadelphia, and that will be installed and, and dedicated this late April, early May. Um, and then also PNZ has given us approval. We're going to tear down our tool museum and build a special collections museum, which will have um, it will have this 1825 carriage that we've spent a lot of money to restore. And it's beautiful. And it'll have a working print shop with the Hoey Corn Press, which is the only one of its kind in Connecticut. And it will have a dedicated space and an original studio from the Silvermine Art Colony. So we're hopeful that that building will be built by year end. So all of this happens in 2024. And, um, you know, one of the things, and, and Greg has heard me talk about this, is that there isn't a place in Connecticut, I mean, in New Canaan, to hear the history of the town. So we think that with this exhibit, it can kind of double as a visitor center. And it will allow us to have information on other organizations because people will come and start there and learn about the town and then move on. Wow, you're going to be busy. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, though. Tara, what's happening at the library other than the, the greens coming along? Hi. Yes, the green is coming along. I'm sure you can all see it. <laughs> Um, well, I'm pretty sure um, most of you probably know our longtime executive director, Lisa, is retiring in December. Um, so um, right now I'm I'm on a personnel search committee, and um, I think that's occupying a lot of the, our time internally um, because we uh, hope to have a new director appointed sort of uh, through, through Lisa's transition and so forth. Um, but, you know, we've still got a full lineup of 
programs and um, instructional classes and, um, you know, for the fall. Um, and um, we are dealing now with school back in session and um, the library is being uh, lovely, uh, lovingly taken over by teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> so that's always fun. Um, but, you know, I, I would love to, um, just listening to you all, I would love to um, get more in, in contact with, with a lot of you directly about sort of um, cross-promoting and, and working together on, um, you know, events that we have going on. Because I, I feel right already, like, I don't know a lot of, a lot about, you know, the things I'm hearing about just vis-a-vis -vis, um, living in town and working at the library. So, um, yeah, uh, you know, I know we all, I, I guess, we, an exchange of emails and so forth, but... Um, yeah, yeah, you've got everyone's email on the yes. uh, reminder, so you can reach out, but all about that, the, the power of partnership for sure. Yes. Greg, you've got big news too, right? Uh, yeah, a few things. So on the on the site itself, we have uh, uh, stone installations uh, by Connecticut artist Mark Menon. It'll run through the end of the season. We also have the uh, David Hart, uh, a colored garden on the property. Uh, then in terms of partnerships, which you just mentioned, we have our partnership with New Canaan Library, which is partly funded by uh, New Canaan Community Foundation. And we've got uh, Max Strang on Thursday, September 14th. Mark Menon will be bearing on Tuesday, October 3rd. Siku Kook on October 12th, Thursday. And uh, the big event that you were referring to is a week from, well, not a week anymore, actually on Monday, the 11th. Uh, my successor begins working at the glass house. So uh, she's asked me to stay on for a period of overlap. And uh, I'm sure that will that will come to pass. And uh, I look forward to her getting to meet all of you folks and uh, and find out uh, what what goes on. She will be living actually in uh, the Cove section of the, of Stanford, having moved from uh, northern New Jersey. So the area will be somewhat new to her, though she's spent many summers at uh, in row eight so not totally new and as i say i'm you're all on the list of people that she needs to meet when she can uh, get some time to do so great meg greg i'm really looking forward to meeting her and we've connected already on linkedin so excited to have lunch with her at grace farms or in town when she's ready um so I wish I could screen share in the spirit of Grace Farms and marketing, but this is our new program for sure. Um, it's available on site at Grace Farms. If there are places that you think it'd be helpful to have in town, we're always I'm always willing to bring some wherever you know it would be of interest. But in our new visitor center, Nancy, or um, the library, or wherever it may be fun to have them, um, we do one about once a, every third of the year. So this has just come out. And it's you know packed with programs from the fall. Um, in the spirit of partnership, like always trying to figure out where's our sweet spot. We don't want to overlap with anyone. We want to get it just right. Um, the September programs are everything from nature walks and fall foliage and pollinators and butterfly um, exploration and land conservation to um, things for an October for design, like an interiors tour with one of the architects who designed Grace Farms. Um, uh, other architecture tours, a lighting tour. Um, let me just flip through my slides here. We also have, um, if for people who are interested in film, we're doing a film series about food. We also have a fashion film showing, which has been really successful in the past. Um, and seasonal garden experiences, textile uh, workshops. And I just also wanted to mention for anyone who maybe hasn't been to Grace Farms for some of the music programming, we're really experimenting with what might work, but it just seems to be like, people come out of the woodwork for these musical performances. And they're, you know, sometimes in the late afternoon, sometimes in the evening, some are more family friendly during the day, some are a little heady, but even the heady ones, like we just had one last weekend called Music or Beauty and Logic, which is like a, there's musical performance, but it's mixed in with conversation. And there were hundreds of people there. And it's, it's just, it's overwhelming. It's really surprising to us. So um, we're always trying to manage the crowds, but it's been very popular. So again, if there are ways that we can partner, like people are coming for that send them to you for other things. We'd love to do that. There's a number of them coming up in the fall. And then the last thing I'll mention is our annual benefit, which falls at the end of October for design. Um, this year it will be opened by the Poet Laureate, Joy Harjo, um, who is, I think just gonna be spectacular as the sun setting in the sanctuary, uh, which is like the 
glass enclosed amphitheater space at Grace Farms if you haven't been there. Um, and then everyone will, um, after having cocktails up there, promenade down the river building to the evening in the um, glass enclosed court volume. So um, tons of great music, a dinner band, and excitement about New Canaan. So we'd love to have you come and join us. If you have questions about it, just let me know. Wow, another busy, you're all busy. Uh, AJ, what have you got? Oh, Greg, sorry. I don't know how I neglected to mention that we got uh, our permit from the town of New Canaan to begin the uh, restoration of the brick house and work oh, has actually begun. So that's a big deal. Good news. I just have a report on all the nonprofits in town. Oh my goodness, you guys. Everybody is having some sort of event, a gala, a speech, yeah, everything. And what's interesting is that there, um, you know, a lot of them haven't had anything for two or three years. So they are really at a loss as to what locations and all of that kind of stuff. So we've been really trying to push them and say, hey, why don't you go and talk to so-and-so? Why don't you go talk to so-and-so? So it's not like everything's at the country club. So we've been trying to get them to say, hey, go to the library. There's so many different opportunities there that could happen. Speak to Nancy Gary. You know, there's things that could happen. So I'm I'm excited. It, there's a lot going on in town and um, really robust. These people who've moved into town are starting to get active. So it's exciting. Great. Um, Alan, you're busy. Uh, couple thoughts. Very busy at work, but... Um, it's funny, my mother's a senior in town and we were looking at the Lapham schedule the other day. That is such a great resource. And I know yeah. we never really talked to the, in the MTDAC, but it might be interesting to have, because who's ever programming that is really good. I mean- Yeah, that's Aggie Aspinwall. She's doing a great job. That's another good suggestion. Discussions, the, oh, like, I wish I didn't have to work. I mean, I'd be there every day to have so many good things going right. on. Right. Um, so I, I just think that's something we might want to look at from time to time. Um, and then I was um, in the Berkshires a couple of weeks ago. One of my clients is a Red Lion Inn. So I was in Stockbridge and I was walking around and it's, you know, it's so busy there, but like they don't have nearly the stores we have, nor the restaurants. You know, they've got obviously the Norman Rockwell Museum, which is amazing, and then Tanglewood, but they don't have what we have. Um, so it's just interesting to see. And they all, obviously Great Barrington is very close. But the, um, I was talking to the woman in the gift shop at the restaurant. I said, God, why do you sell all these plates and stuff? She said, oh, for Tanglewood. She said, so many people come in and want a picnic. So hmm. they sell so much of that. And it made me think, if, you know, if we could, I know we do do concerts. And I know Grace Farms has them and things like that. But that just, you know, people come there just for that. And they know that they have to bring their picnic. I don't know. It'd be kind of fun to. Fascinating some kind of business around, or just something like, oh my God, you have to go to New Canaan and hear this and you got to bring a picnic and. I don't know. Right. Well, yeah. certainly the uh, the Waveney Wednesday concert scene. I mean, I think I went to every single one of them this summer and they were so well attended. Everybody's got the picnic, but you're right. Yeah. That whole sort of piece. Yeah. Of but if we live here, we know about it, but it's something. That's right. Happened. And then one other thought I got that thinking up there, they have an artist in residence in the in the hotel. They get a new one every year. But in Laura, maybe, I don't know if we have any empty storefronts. It feels like we don't have as many, but it could be kind of fun to do an artist in residence in one of those storefronts and do like a local, you know, like a annual competition or every six months we change it out or every three months, you know, to watch an artist at work and it could be all kinds of mediums. So I know I'm suggesting a lot of things that require more work, but it just, I, I think about what drives people and what drives press and what drives, so it could be some great idea. idea populate any empty spaces or something. A couple of years ago, as part of the Art in the Windows, we did a um, piece of it was in plain air where the artists, many of the artists whose art was in some of the uh, windows in the stores, they were out on the sidewalk actually working on a piece mm -hmm. and it was fabulous. It was great. So we could, we could definitely pick that up again with the uh, Art in the Windows project, if not something longer than that. Yeah, um, all right, I'm going to sign off here because I hear children screaming in the background and they all think they've got under control, but I'm not <laughs> so sure they do. Um, so I'm going to sign off and I'm, and, and I mean, I think we've covered everything we needed to cover tonight. Um, but let's plan on the 19th being in person for those who can. I'll, I'll get a link for anybody who can't. 
let's t think we're going to probably be an hour and a half on that meeting just because we've got a couple of things that we're going to cover. Um, and then uh, in the meantime, Tara can reach out to some of you about some of these, you know, possible opportunities to work together and we'll just be in touch. Good. Oh, Thanks, good. everyone. Thanks, Thanks Tucker. Too. Bye. Yeah.